Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today's topic correlates with the giveaway of the burning of Prospero box set. We are talking about 40 Facts About Sisters of Silence. The Sisters of Silence were an all-female imperial order of witch hunters. They were active during the time of the Great Crusade in the early 31st millennium and their purpose was to hunt and kill rogue human psychers whose activities presented a terrible danger to the people of the newborn Imperium of Man. They were also known as the Silent Sisterhood and the Witch Seekers. They were the militant arm of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica and were referred to internally within the records of the Adeptus Terra as the Departamento Investigates. Of all the Emperor of Mankind's servants, the Sisters of Silence were perhaps the most mysterious. These warrior investigators were tasked with the apprehension of untrained psychers, often referred to on primitive human worlds as witches, whose abilities sometimes manifested in ways that could very well be dangerous to their fellow human beings, particularly if they became hosts for a foul entity of the warp. Full-fledged Sisters of Silence each swore an oath of silence as a mark of fealty to the Emperor and their sacred mission. No sister could utter a word until death, once she took the oath of tranquility. A novice sister who has yet to take the vows was allowed to converse normally, though they were also trained in the use of various forms of gestural signings incorporated into the order as its primary means of communication. Sisters in waiting served their order by speaking when communication was needed with outsiders acting as interpreters between the senior ranks of sisters and other imperial servants. Those sisters that took the Oath of Tranquility communicated exclusively through the use of various forms of sign language, similar to the battle signs employed by the Space Marines, and would not willingly break their most sacred oath. These women never spoke, even when wounded by projectile rounds, or badly injured by weapon fire or the bite of an edged weapon. The sisters operated the Adeptus Astra Telepathica's infamous black ships, which ranged the galaxy, following behind the Great Crusade's expeditionary fleets, in search of rogue psychers to capture and expunge, seeking to collect and carry them back to Terra, where they would be tested and their eventual fate decided. Though few in number, the Sisters of Silence commanded great respect within the Imperium, and most servants of the Emperor regarded them with awe. Few would willingly stand in their way or interfere with their activities, and few indeed were those who were comfortable in their presence. The Sisters of Silence were well-trained warriors, and with the added benefit of their anti psyker abilities, they were dangerous opponents for any of the enemies of mankind. Unlike other living beings, these women, sworn to silence, possessed no presence in the war, and were therefore unaffected by psychic powers. There were many names for them in the multitude of human cultures to be found across the galaxy. Untouchables, pariahs, blanks, all of the members of their order were non-psychic, for they bore the pariah gene which made them immune to all forms of psychic assault, and their minds unreadable by telepathy. These bearers of the pariah gene possessed the innate ability to disrupt psychic abilities. Their mere presence was intolerable to a psyker for they became visibly uncomfortable in their company. Close proximity or intimate contact with a pariah could cause a psyker great pain. This made it ideal for the sisters to serve the imperial witch hunters, identifying psychers secretly hidden amongst the normal human populations, as well as discovering those as yet unaware of their own innate ability. The sisters were also authorized to destroy any psychers they deemed too dangerous to capture and send back to Terra for testing. The Sisters of Silence were organized into multitude warrior cadres that were readily identifiable by their corresponding animal totem, like the Frost Lynx, Ice Leopard, Iron Lynx, Raptor, and White Falcon. The sisters were also identifiable by their squad type. The squad type includes Sisters in Waiting. A sister-in-waiting is an aspirant to the Silent Sisterhood who performs all of the menial tasks within the Order and waits on the appraisal of the more senior-ranking sisters. A Null Maiden was a full-fledged member of the Sisterhood who had taken the Oath of Tranquility. 
of Vigilator was an unspecific rank of Silent Sister who often accompanied an Oblivion Knight on a mission. Oblivion Knights were senior ranking sisters who led other sisters of different ranks on their various missions on behalf of the Emperor and the Sisterhood. The Excrudiatus were sisters clad in thick buckled studded coats of red leather. These sisters had no eyes, for in their place they had two heavy lenses or ruby colored bionic implants in place of their natural eye. It is said that to attain this esteem rank, a silent sister must personally have slain a hundred witches. A witch seeker Persuviant is a senior ranking sister who ranks above an oblivion knight within the hierarchy of the order. The sister commander is a senior most rank within the order and she serves as the overall commander of the silent sisterhood. The fate that befell the Sisters of Silence following the Horus Heresy was not recorded in Imperial records. It is not known whether or not they were utterly annihilated during the defense of the Emperor's secret Imperial Webway project within the Imperial Palace's dungeon, or if they were disbanded and incorporated into the ranks of the fleeting organization of the Inquisition. Their fate would not be known for over a millennia and a half. By the mid-32nd millennium, only a cadre of 50 Sisters of Silence still remained, exiled to the world of Nadiris, located in the far reaches of the Segmentum Pacificus. The last forgotten bastion of the Silent Sisterhood had remained for over 1,500 years. Despite all they had done in the defense of the Imperium during the Horus Heresy and their fierce loyalty to the Emperor of Mankind and his Primarchs, the subsequent distrust and paranoia of the battered Imperium was such that the remaining Sisters of Silence were eventually exiled to the far reaches of the galaxy, away from the heart of the Imperial Throne World. The remaining members of their order held great disdain and utter contempt for the current Imperium at that time. Yet despite this, they were eventually convinced to help aid the Imperium in its time of need when it was beset upon by the massive orc wall of the greenskin warlord known as the Beast. Following their involvement in the campaign against the greenskin menace, there remains no known imperial records of the Silent Sisterhood still operating within the 41st millennium, nor is there any reference to their destruction or disbandment. Thoughtmark was one of the symbolic sign languages employed by the Silent Sisterhood. Small in scale, full of delicate gestures of fingers and thumbs, it served to convey concepts of great subtlety or intricate nature. It was far more graceful than the other larger sharp motions of Battlemark. Battlemark was the common sign language used by the sisters to communicate on the battlefield. The gestures used to communicate in Battlemark were large sharp motions that enable a person to convey their thoughts in line of sight and could be seen at extreme ranges. This gestural language is more similar to the Astarte battle sign and may have a similar origin. Silent sisterhood transmissions sent to locales beyond line of sight were dispatched not with words but in an ancient machine readable variant of Thoughtmark known as Orcs Code, a mechanical rattle of clicking that to the untrained ear would resemble the sounds of turning cogwheels. The sisters were equipped with a variety of weapons and devices especially designed to aid in the nullification and capture of psychers. It was difficult to tell these warrior women apart from one another. They wore a lighter, smaller variant of power armor polished to a glitter and sheen, unadorned by any brash signia or fluttering oath papers like the warriors of the Astartes. The sisters' faces were hidden behind hawkish gold helmets equipped with breather gear that let the unmodified members of the sisterhood manage the toxic air of hostile worlds. A notable sister is Senior Celia Horoda. Sister Senior Celia was the witch seeker Persevant and a heroine of the Sisters of Silence during the Battle of Terra when there was a massive demonic incursion within the Imperial section of the webway created by the Emperor within the subterranean levels of the Imperial Palace. On one occasion, a mighty bloodthirster, the greatest of the demons of corn, fought its way through the Imperial defenses and to the webway gate into the palace itself. Only the last minute intervention of Sister Celia was able to stop the beast from crashing through the gates and into the Imperial Palace's dungeons. 
Sister Celia confronted the huge demon, her presence chilling the air around it and stiffening its otherworldly power. And silently, she dispatched the monster with swift strokes from her blade of frost. The effort utterly exhausted her, and with a final banishing stroke of her sword, she collapsed onto the threshold between the warp and real space, never to take another breath. The sisters' most successful campaign during the early Horus Heresy occurred during the Imperial Assault on the Thousand Suns homeworld of Prospero, after the Primarch Magnus was found guilty of violating the anti-sorcery edicts of the Council of Nicaea. The Sisters of Silence deployed in support of the Space Wolf Legion and a contingent from the Lego Custodis, and provided the main line of defense against the potent psychic abilities of the Thousand Suns Legion. Another important sister is Sister Herkaze. She was one of the Oblivion Knights of the Sisters of Silence. Alongside Amendera Kendall, Sister Karaze was drawn to the notice of the Sisters of Silence as a child. Each of the sisters was recruited from a world in the Belladone Reach. Kendall and Herkaze had shared a vague kinship throughout their aspirant trials, but as they grew into full sisterhood, the woman's early friendship soured. Years later, they were bitter rivals within the Order, each nursing hatred for the other. How this bitterness began is truly unknown, but one story, told by other novice, said that the woman had once fought with a fire witch on Shell Trinus, her Kaze unwilling to fall back before the powerful enemy and regroup, had been struck by a burning debris and later turned the blame upon Kendall for refusing to support her. Sister Emirella extensive old wounds might indicate that there was once truth to this tale. Sister Amendera Kendall was very important in the order as well. At the outset of the Horus Heresy, Kendall was 30 standard years old. She wore her purple black armor hair in a top knot from a seamless scalp, bare but for a blood red tattoo of the Imperial Aquila. Sister Kendall was an oblivion knight and commanded the black ship Ira Gloris. During the Great Crusade, Sister Kendall was a part of the cadre of sisters sent to the Order of Malkador the Sigilite to deploy alongside the Death Guard Legion in a prosecution of a Xenos known as Jorgal for daring to venture into human space. The sisters proved instrumental in attacking and wounding a powerful mutant psyker. They then captured the wounded creature for transport back to Terra and further research into their abilities. Sister Kendall then moved on to perform other duties. After the opening shots of the Horus Heresy occurred on Isfan 3, Sister Kendall volunteered to protect the Death Guard Captain Nathaniel Garo and the survivors of the Frigate Eisenstein at the Sominous Citadel on Luna. She was later forced to lead her fellow sisters into battle with the corrupted Death Guard Astarte, Solon Decius, who had finally given in to Nergalite's contingent, inflicted upon him by the reanimated corpse aboard the Eisenstein. His corrupted body had mutated into a demonic entity known as the Lord of Flies. After defeating their potent demonic threat, Sister Kendall, Captain Garo, and Captain Cruz of the Luna Wolves were confronted by Malkador the Sigilite. The Regent of Terra informed them of his intention to form a new organization which would need to utilize men and women of the inquisitive nature and offer them a place within his new fellowship of loyalists, even promoting her to the rank of Agentia Territus. While Kendall's ultimate fate remains unknown, she was entered into Imperial history as the first mere human to order the ultimate sanction of an exterminatus carried out on the treacherous world of Proxima Majoris. And those were 40 facts about the Sisters of Silence. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now let's get to the giveaway. And the winner of this awesome box set um, in the Burning of Prospero giveaway is that person right there so that person right there gets this awesome box simply message us either on youtube facebook um you can email us at one mind syndicate one the number one at gmail.com uh to give us your mailing address and we'll go ahead and ship this awesome guy out uh, and now you know a little background on the sisters of silence as well so it's pretty pretty awesome 
Um, if you did not win, thank you for participating. Uh, but don't be scared. Don't don't worry. Don't shout. Uh, once we hit 40,000 subscribers, we're gonna do a massive giveaway because we do 40 facts, and we thought it would be awesome for the 40k subscriber um, giveaway to be a huge, awesome one. So stay tuned for that because it's coming. And thank you for participating. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more awesome Warhammer 40k content. Please comment down below and give us suggestions as to what topic you guys would like to um, hear about in the future. Remember, tag it with suggestion followed by uh, the topic that you guys want us to discuss. Thanks again for everything that you guys do, and I'll catch you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.